Oh, I see. And how do we go to the next slide? Can you go to the next slide for me? Okay. So today, um, you know, we'll, the first keynote session, we had like some of the demos, et cetera, planned as a part of the keynote. But then, like, we looked at the content that these guys are putting together, and, and they are putting us to shame. So we figured, like, you know, let the experts do the demos. Uh, you know, our part, like, BizTalk, as you guys know, is, like, uh, you know, a, a very thriving partner ecosystem. So we are going to, like, large part defer to the partners for doing all the demos. So today, the one thing that Microsoft only can do, I will do today, uh, which is, like, talking to about, like, you know, product strategy, uh, the vision that we have for the integration space within Microsoft. And how do you look at like you know the roadmap forward? Um, yeah, the first and foremost, uh, you know, I think uh, we want to get here uh, to reiterate the message that we are very committed to the space. And in terms of uh, uh, you know, we are making huge investment both on the server side, the stock server side, as well as taking the stock forward for the next decade, which basically includes like you know how to take every business to cloud, including the integration business. And as a part of that, there is a huge opportunity. Um, from an ecosystem standpoint, from a customer standpoint, I'll, I'll actually talk to a bunch of those uh, in the next hour. Um, I, just feel free to stop me anytime. If there are any questions, you know, we can make this interactive. Um, I think there are a bunch of us who will probably leave after the first hour because we have a conference in Stockholm. Uh, I will stay back for the Q&A, but feel free to ask Q&A. Guru in particular, like he has been with BizTalk from day one. And he is on the support side of things uh, for the last decade, so he can actually talk talk to you uh, more authoritatively than I can in terms of uh, uh, you know the history of Bistock and support, etc. Uh, go to the next slide. Yeah. This I'm going to skip. So I'll spend like maybe 30 seconds on this one just to uh, bring home the point that um, this is a, like a decade old, decade uh, old mature. Uh, server portfolio, like we have been like every year, every two years, we have been constantly moving the needle forward in terms of adding more and more functionality. And as you can see, like, you know, the customer customer growth velocity has been pretty steady. And, and uh, when we are talking customers here, like, you know, it's like Fortune 5000 kind of customers, uh, big customers, enterprise customers that need like you know, a lot of integration need um, and have a complex heterogeneous system that they need something like BizTalk for the, for the integration side of things. And in terms of like, you know, one of the, one of the biggest value pro proportion for Bistag has always been the total cost of ownership is a lot lower compared to, uh, compared to like so the competitors out there. And this again, one play, one platform where like there is a thriving partner ecosystem and developer ecosystem. Um, you know, I think like Am Amsterdam, we were there like, you know, yesterday, uh, there were like a, you know, user group, like there's like a lot of enthusiasm and like, you know, we keep hearing the same story everywhere, like wherever we go in Europe. Uh, there is like a lot of thriving uh, e ecosystem that that uh, uh, customers and uh, ISVs can tap. Next one. So I'll spend a bit about what we are delivering in two, two, 2013 this year, and I will as as I like go more, uh, you know, I'll talk to the the strategies of why we are actually spacing our uh, delivery vehicles this way. The first and foremost. Uh, we are, uh, we say like, you know, we are uh, delivering the next uh, version of uh, BizTalk server, six months from Windows 8, and we are on track. I'm happy to reiterate again that we are, we are actually like, you know, our, like we are done, like we put out a feature complete beta release in October that is already out there. How many of you are, have, have tried using 2013 already? Okay, you know what I'm talking about. And, and so what's out there, for all practical intent and purposes, is a feature complete release. Uh, we are working with a set of customers to take go live on that bits. But as of this week, we also hit uh, zero bug bounds, which is an internal engineering milestone where like, we basically say, you know, we went through all the rigor, including like, the, uh, the power stress fundamentals and all the release readiness, et cetera. At this point, it's like golden bits, and we are going to start like, creating medias, et cetera. So the, the, the commitment from here on out is, like, you know, we say like, you know, it's Q2, uh, somewhere in the beginning of Q2, and that's, that's still, uh, we are staying the course on that one. <laughs> and and you, can, you can grab, can talk me offline if you want more details on that. Uh, the next one I talked to a bit about, as, as you saw in the previous slide, we are thinking a lot about cloud. Like if you talk to any server business in Microsoft, they are actually talking, th thinking about cloud, how to take the server business and customers to cloud. And that is because there is a transformation happening in the industry, right? 
another show of hand. How many of you are thinking about cloud or already using cloud? Yeah, I think that's the response, right? I see about like a third to 50% of the, uh, the audience are already like in a wherever we go or actually actively thinking. And we are right along that curve, like, you know, matching your thinking. Um, so as you all know, uh, Microsoft has, uh, you know, flagship uh, Azure platform. Think of it as, uh, you know, Windows on the cloud. Um, so Windows, if you look at Windows, the thing that it offers uh, from an operating system perspective, it has sound fundamental building blocks. Um, you know, where like a server product can come and tap, like whether it's like a .NET platform or like a file system or whatever, like SQL Server. So then we can actually like add like a robust uh, portfolio, like you know, uh, server portfolio on top of all the building blocks already available. And I, I want to spend like you know, 30 seconds on that front. One of the strength of Windows <coughs> is that like when you build a server, everything comes from an integrated strategy, right? If you go to System Center or SQL or Windows or BizTalk, take BizTalk for example. BizTalk the strength, it draws from all the underlying portfolio of product that it uses. It uses .NET heavily, it uses SQL heavily, it uses Windows heavily. So if not for that, like definitely true for some of our competitors, they have to redo all of those concepts. So if I am doing some of that, then what happens is that, uh, that's one way to go. But then I'm actually like taking a vertical and I'm actually explaining everybody like how to manage it, how to manage the underlying entities, etc. So from, from our perspective, you know, the total you know, TCO of BizTalk is lower, partly because like, hey, BizTalk heavily like purses everything into SQL. So as long as there is SQL admins out there, or you know how to actually develop for SQL or manage SQL, you are able to leverage all of that even in the BizTalk, BizTalk vertical. And the reason why I'm actually calling this out is, if you talk about Azure platform, again, like you need to have like, you know, a sound cloud platform, define the fundamentals for the cloud. Because it's like fundamentally different, right? You go from uh, offline, you know, uh, server with a file system attached to it, to you know, out in the nebula, like in, in the cloud. And what is a cloud operating system, right? I mean, I think, I think, I think, a lot of people are trying it. In many ways, Microsoft had ahead of the curve in terms of pioneering, like you know, what a cloud operating system should look like. And this is what Microsoft does best in terms of um, you know scalability, reliability. I'll definitely touch more on that as, as I talk through some of the Vistock services and what we are doing on the cloud. There is disaster recovery, geo replication, all of that. All of that heavy lifting is just taken care uh, for you by the platform. Again, I'll cover that. The reason why I call that out is we are doing two things today. Um, in 2013, which are playing to the cloud theme. One is we, we acknowledge that like, hey, you know, wait, only like 30% or 50% of the audience or our customer segment is actually thinking about doing something with cloud, which is fine. I think one of the first things that you are going to do is you are going to take everything you got and try to use the, the cloud for like, you know, managing your IT. Like, you know, I think another way to say this is, hey, I don't want to go through the hassle of procuring hardware managing hardware, et cetera. That's the easy thing for me to outsource. Great. Like, you know, I think, I think you can start using cloud for that. You can start using Azure for that. So the middle, middle bullet is all that, right? So we are basically making it possible such that, uh, you know, you can take BizTalk as it is, the solutions you have as it is, and with, like, within six minutes, you can go to Azure. Like, we already have, like, a standard pre-built BizTalk images available from the gallery. You can click a button. I'm sure there are demos that that that'll 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 show that. If not, we will we will uh, demo that. It's that easy. Like within 10 minutes, you can have an instance of BizTalk fully configured, up and running, including SQL Server, including uh, Visual Studio, everything put together. Say like if you want to take take 2013 for a spin, if you want to like do some dev test scenario, within 10 minutes you can be up and running, and that's the value prop of the cloud. So that is where we are investing heavily in this release because we all know that at the very least. Uh, you know, dev test scenarios, you should be able to like, you know, leverage uh, BizTalk on Azure Persistent VM. The next one is more of the, the foundation for when I talk about like all the cloud fundamentals, cloud OS, etc. We need to s think through this in similar ways for BizTalk, right? How do I think through for the next decade? And, and how do I make, make, make the, the platform built from the, from the get-go to be cloud-ready, cloud-first mentality, and tap into all the potential cloud offers? And that is where I think we need to kind of reimagine BizTalk for the next decade. And, and we are doing that. I think I'll, we'll go into more, more details there uh, over the next half hour or so. And this is, again, like, you know, we are going to release the, the version one of the release in the, next, uh, in the first half of this year. And again, we are on track for that. So all of what you see today, all of what you talk about today, 
they are all working bits. They are not like you know, some theory, etc. Like everything you see today are working, and, and we are marching towards like getting, getting them out to you in the first, first half of uh, 2013. So I'll spend a little bit about what, what sort of investments. Uh, again, I'll keep it at a high level. I think there will be like demos, partner, deep dives, etc. where like, you know, we can actually go more into detail. Or offline, if you have questions in Q&A sessions, uh, you know, we can take and, and spend more time on like, you know, specific items that you may be interested in. So if you look at 2013, there are two broad themes of investment that we have done, right? One is just going back to the, uh, the platform, uh, you know, the server that you all know and love. How do I actually take the next, uh, next step forward? Like, you know, the, 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 the curve that you saw. Hey, you know, how do I actually, like, improve the portfolio functionality such that, like, you know, hey, it's the next major release. So that is one broad investment. The, the fourth and fifth bucket is one category, right? I think I talked to some of that. Every one of you is thinking about cloud, and you're not going to move at one shot. So here at Microsoft, and Bestock in particular, we are heavily thinking about how to build a hybrid ecosystem such that you have part of your solution, most of your solution on the server side, or on the on-premises on side, but you want to tap into the cloud potential if and when appropriate. And so 2013 is laying foundation for a lot of, a lot of the, uh, um, the building blocks there, right? In terms of being able to connect to the cloud and tap into the cloud potential. We'll definitely go into more of the, more of the details there uh, when, I, when I go to those buckets. So the first one, which is like, sub, like uh, making, making the stock modern for all the latest platforms and schemas and by, you know, LOB partner, ecosystem, et cetera, hey, this is a no-brainer in many ways, right? I mean, when, whenever I show this, people say, of course, yeah, of course, yeah, I want you to support VS 2012, and of course, Windows 8 server, and of course, like an you know, Oracle, whatever the latest release of Oracle, <laughs> pardon my ignorance there. And, and uh, same with like all the, all the industry schemas, right? Whether it's the HL7 schema and Swift, et cetera. So, but the work that needs to happen behind the scene for us from an engineering system standpoint uh, is phenomenal, right? And, but it's just completely transparent, it's completely hidden, and the way it should be. So one of our commitment is that, like, hey, you know, as we release new new uh, um, release of server, we want you to tap into the productivity and uh, you know, improvements the ecosystem has made, and the ecosystem that Bistock supports. So, so I think we are very committed to that. So I think as and when, like, you know, you see the next release of Bistock, next investment of Bistock, this one is something that will always stay behind. This one we will never scale back, kind of a thing. Like, take for example the Swift, right? Like in many of the ways, like, you know. Uh, we are even ahead of some of the drafts. Like as the drafts are coming up, we are catching up. Like and, and there are feedback saying like, slow down a bit. Like you know, I think we are kind of like, uh, so we are that eager to catch up with uh, uh, um, uh, you know the industry schemas and unlocking like you know more and more like, scenarios for for our customers. And then the next two bucket is uh, you know, we thought of like simplifying management experience. And this is not all, all there is. Like, you know, there is like plenty that, that went into the, this pivot. But I'll call out like a few. And then again, uh, you know, we can, we can go as deep as you want in offline sessions. And definitely like Guru is a great resource here if you want to like, you know, um, have a and a with them. So I'll call out a couple, right? So uh, we have greatly improved the dependency, tra dependency uh, tracking uh, um, uh, facility within, within the Bistock admin console. Part of what I mean is, until now, it's kind of a no-brainer once you have it. But until now, the, the hard thing with Bist managing Bistock uh, dependencies is that some developer five years ago, 10 years ago, put in a solution. And once a solution is in, all there is to actually track all the dependency, if you want to delete a schema, or like, you know, if you want to like, decommission or orchestration, et cetera, all you have available for you is documentation. So you go try to delete it, it fails, or like it has dependencies. You don't know like, what are the other dependencies that you need to track down before you, do, uh, you know, de delete the, the root artifact that you are interested in deleting. So we thought about, hey, you know, I think there are like, multiple, multiple big customers. Like, when you're having a, like, a not a very complex ecosystem, it's OK to go by uh, documentation. But like, you know, MSIT within Microsoft <laughs> is using uh, BizTalk for all our partner B2B uh, uh, transactions. And you can imagine the amount of uh, complex uh, uh, you know, uh, arcs going everywhere in terms of dependency. So what we have done in this release is we have actually introduced an OM API in terms of querying dependencies, what you are using and what is using you kind of a thing. 
And we also have built into basic uh, tracking viewer kind of, uh, uh, you know, in, into our admin console. And, and this is again like you know, our promise is that hey you know we have done the we have unlocked the potential and the partner can build like you know more fancy tracking UI etc. But by no means like the basic admin console also gets the job done. That's one 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 thing right. And then I'll talk to another thing. How many of you you are using or have heard about uh, ESP toolkit? Hey, quite a bit. And how many of you thought like it's a great experience setting it up and configuring it? Wow, <laughs> awesome. So I like you. <laughs> But, but, you know, I mean, I think I, I don't want to take any credit for, like, you know, um, 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 in, in, you know in, in terms of, like, you know, oh, just striking that, like, you know, I think, I, think you, I, do, I do want to do a better job there, right? I think as a team, like, we could have done a better job as Microsoft. So if you look at ESB, ESB as, as an added layer on top of BizTalk, it's, it's, it's fairly powerful, right? And it's, 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 it, it adds, like, you know, yeah, you know Unique, be it exception handling or be it the dynamic uh, routing, etc. All the all the all the unique uh, things that it tries to simplify on top of BizTalk is actually very good value add. But if, when you go back and looked at like, hey, you know, why people are not using it, why there is not more adoption, why not all of our customers are using it in one form or the other, it always comes down to, well, you need to be a rocket scientist to get the damn thing configured and set up, right? And 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 debug, etc. So. And then we actually double clicked even further. And then it basically comes down to, you know what? You have this ugly 17 step, 18 steps, and only two guys in my shop can do it. I don't want to do it. So what we did in this release is, again, like in the, within the simplified pivot, simplified configuration experience pivot, we actually made this a first class out of the box support, uh, out of the box experience within the BizTalk umbrella, um, rather than as a toolkit on top. By that I mean, like, you know, um, you know, when you go install BizTalk, you would see it as a checkbox option, you check it, and then come some other config driven experience, boom, it's set up. And, and we are fully behind supporting it and evolving it, et cetera, in the future. And I won't go into every single thing. Um, you know, we have done like tons of improvements on the connector side, uh, you know, the transport side, as well as like uh, IBM connectivity, et cetera. Uh, performance is one pivot that where we spend a lot of time, a lot of energy, uh, especially like some of the, how many healthcare vertical people are here? So definitely that it's a lot of health, a lot of the benefits here that are going to be more obvious for some of the healthcare customers that were pushing the envelope, like the MLLP adapter, dynamics and ports, orders and ports, et cetera. Some of the performance improvements here are multifolds. And again, it goes back to we are actually tapping into some of the newer improvements that our partners have made within Microsoft, like SQL, .NET, et cetera. If we look at like an you know, XSL compile transform, every single one of you, just, just adopting 2013 will see a perf boost. There is like 20%, uh, is the number right? 20% performance boost for every mapper uh, because we went from an interpreted engine to compile engine. And we have done a lot of work behind the scene to make sure it's 100% compatible. And so the, you have the compatibility guarantee, and you do have an option to go back to interpreter engine for whatever reason if you choose to. But you know these are the sort of things that uh, you know we, we take very seriously and we bake it internally. So the last those two comes from uh, our HIS team, and <coughs> they have done quite a bit of improvement even in the beta release that we put out. And this is again one part of the product that uh, we are receiving uh, feedback from the IBM community that hey, now we want to see like some more scenarios uh, uh, light up, and we are working towards like how to onboard more, without actually like you know and, and figure out like BizTalk still the release date, etc. Great. So next, I'll talk a bit about cloud, right? <coughs> and and again, the cornerstone in, in our strategy, and and again, feedback from all of you is it's it's going like we are concentrating heavily on hybrid application, right? Like you have most of your uh, IP, most of your existing investment on the server side, but there are places where like you wish like you are either struggling today, like in terms of say, there is like a lot of incoming, you are actually struggling in terms of uh, uh, keeping up with like the, you know, the load, like you know, you would wish like you know, there is like automatic, you are putting like MSMQ or something, but it's like you know, in terms of scalability, always on reliability, all of that. Uh, you wish like there is a better way to do this. That could be one aspect of it. Or there are like you know WCF binding or WCF assets that you want to expose uh, uh, um, to the to the external world outside of your firewall. Today the options are uh, bad and really bad, right? I think you have to either like host it yourself um, you know, in a proxy or like you know you need to punch through your firewall, manage that. 
and I'm pretty sure you can all tell a hard st like in you know, a story between like an you know, interaction between developer and IT whenever you go and say I need to punch through a firewall and that conversation doesn't really go very well. So and we can all understand that, right? So I think some other ways where we are moving the needle in this pivot is we looked into all the all the difficulty that people are having today. The stock is a great product and it offers like a lot of potential. But when it comes to like opening the portal to cloud or like connecting with uh, say salesforce.com, any SaaS provider kind of a thing, you know, I think it's it's all doable on top of 2010, but it's very difficult. Like it's very difficult to manage, et cetera. And that doesn't go back to the promise of this talk. Like this talk, we want the experience to be conflict driven, uh, you know, in easy to develop, like, you know, the time to market is higher, maintenance cost is lower kind of a thing. So we have made like, you know, this bucket was a very big bucket for us, right? Because we don't want to like say, we are looking to see like where and all we can go tell a complimentary story with regards to cloud adoption. And this is one place where if you want to like store and forward, there is like a lot of incoming coming from multiple, uh, uh, you know, uh, front offices or back systems, et cetera. And, and you want to basically like manage that always on highly reliable, scalable infrastructure. Cloud fits that pivot perfectly, right? If you take like you know the, what we got like service bus uh, uh, entity stack topics and queues etc., it, it it is built to be high performant, always available, highly scalable kind of infrastructure. And why wouldn't you actually tap into that as opposed to building something like that on, on premise and trying to actually scale up and down and let alone like you know incur the cost of uh, hardware capacity planning and that type of thing. So this is one area where uh, I'm pretty sure there are like going to be demos today that that actually plays to this thing. And then I'll touch on a little bit on like you know REST support and uh, uh, ACS, which is a security aspect of it. Um, I'll, I'll actually, I'll, let me talk to the security side, right? So another great thing is that you can basically say, hey, okay, great, I have actually punctured through my firewall and I expose some entity on the cloud. But then how do I how do I manage it from a security standpoint all under one umbrella? Right? How do I access control such that the access is federated, but I still want single sign-on, like you know that kind of a thing, right? If you look at what Microsoft has built, this is exactly what Azure's value prop is, right? Azure is saying you can actually have any consumer-related federated security uh, sign-on mechanism, which all works. But as an enterprise, if you want to say I want a single sign-on, I want to get it federated through my Active Directory. Right? If, if you know, within my umbrella, I want server and server, uh, in, uh, Azure to be completely seamless, and Azure actually, I, I have all that infrastructure built in, and we are kind of leveraging that in BizTalk. So some of the things that when we natively support, it is much easier for you to have SSO kind of a thing and access control kind of a thing out of the gate. And, and, and you know, if you want more details, we can go into that. So one other thing that we are doing is that you don't have to rewrite or do anything differently to any of the existing technology that you already have. Like say, like take for example, if you want to expose orchestration, right? I, I think you don't need to do any modification there. Some of the some of the improvements that we have done here in terms of service bus connectivity and, and tapping into relay, uh, et cetera, this is completely conflict-driven experience where you are, ho like you are, it's, think of it as adapter hosted by uh, uh, BizTalk to open the port on your behalf. And on your behalf, like we open the port to our, uh, you know, uh, component hosted in the cloud. Again, if they're using our infrastructure, right? So in that perspective, you are not actually exposing any other security threat or any other complexity or exposing like saying, for your component that you have built like five years ago, it, it is completely transparent whether the, the, the message is coming from yet another internal uh, LOB or another internal uh, uh, transport, or it's coming from uh, out, out from outside of your firewall. So we want to make that kind of irrelevant from that perspective. Like that, that is a premise or that is a principle or a principle we are going for here. And and you can drain at your own own pace, right? We are not going to you know, over over overwhelm you, but that is kind of the value prop here, right? I mean, you are you are kind of storing it in the cloud, and you are like you are processing it at your own velocity. So let's put an example around that. Let's say you are uh, uh, exposing your SAP backend. It's one of the most secure system and uh, your backbone of your enterprise, you don't want to expose it out there where it is. But you want to for, uh, definitely leverage the functionality that, uh, that SAP RFC is providing. So the way that you expose it today, it is definitely possible with the structure you today. You can put a RFC uh, interface for it and expose it. What is the value add that we are adding now on top of it? So you're not trying to reinvent that wheel. 
So that means uh, the connectivity to your SAP is coming from desktop server through this WTF interface. That means all of the message malformation or authentication and uh, request response is handled at that layer between desktop and SAP. But well, what is lacking today is uh, you will have to expose your desktop <coughs> infrastructure, either through an HTTP interface or a WCF interface, and manage that web layer that your external customers or partners can hit. That's the part that Service Bus is trying to address. That means you have a relay endpoint on Service Bus, which obviously you could do with App Fabric Connect uh, in 2010. So now that is integrated with 2013, where you are connecting, um, uh, where you are providing a relay service on Service Bus, which is directing the call back to your on-prem uh, server. So now, as you said, uh, for a denial of service, I get some thousand requests suddenly. How can I handle it? How do you handle it today? Today you are handling it on Dubsy upside on, on your uh, web server, right? So you reduce the number of ports or you reduce the number of threads available. Uh, you do the mitigation on the server side. You can continue to do that on service bus relay, right? You can do it on asynchronous relay or asynchronous relay and say that, okay, I'm going to store that incoming request and trickle it down as uh, my resources are available in the backend. So it's nothing different from what you've already been doing. So earlier you had to manage the web server side of it on your own. Now you're delegating that to service bus in the form of a relay. And, and, and as you alluded to, like, you know, I think some of the, uh, geni like, the, the malicious device attack, not the genuine work or load coming in, will actually be load balanced away by throttle by Azure Azure Load Balancer, right? I think those, uh, and it's a very fancy logic from Microsoft Research, right? It's not like, you know, I mean, so this is the kind of the value prop that you are subscribing to. Like, we are actually leveraging Azure, like all this uh, scalable entity, and, and you get that part for free. In terms of validation of malformed messages, et cetera, again, it comes back to whatever, whatever you have, like we cannot actually do any more on top of that, except that like, hey, we can actually product you for DOS, and we are actually taking a lot of the hosting and management experience very seamless, and security side as well, right? I mean, you don't have to worry about like, you know, uh, the relay takes care of like, uh, you don't, you're not puncturing through a firewall, or you, have, like, you don't have like any messy thing like that to worry with. You don't have to have like nasty conversation with your IT department kind of a thing. I'll, I'll like take this one offline with you more. I see that you still have some doubts. Uh, I'll come to you. Before I go today, I'll I'll, I'll see what what you know what I can do to con you know make you convince. <laughs> so yet another thing that I'll I'll uh, spend a little bit time on, and I'm pretty sure there'll be demos today, uh, is around our REST support, right? Every single SaaS provider out there. You know they are they are like already have REST REST APIs like take it like AWS Azure Salesforce or whatever right Google everybody has their uh, uh, cloud entity exposed through metadata and, and exposed through uh, REST APIs so you can get post etc and this again is something that we are natively supporting uh, within 2013. Of course, it was possible on 2010 with some third party or custom code kind of a thing, but it's a first class. Uh, cloud enable support in 2013. And this opens up huge, unlocks huge amount of potential in terms of uh, being able to interrupt, um, again, in a config driven way, very click and, you know, quickly. And then now you are actually connecting to Salesforce, for example, Salesforce to SAP. Uh, now it's like works out of the box, like both, like you can subscribe to Salesforce notification via LA, which is the one that we just touched on. And so you, once you get the notification, you can actually poll more and get more 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 uh, backing information, order information, lead information, et cetera, from, uh, from Salesforce, and then actually process it in your SAP and go back and forth. So it's a very fairly sophisticated, powerful uh, ecosystem that, uh, you know, that is getting unlocked here. You will also expose. What's that? You will also expose your artifacts. You'll also expose your artifacts, et cetera. So it unlocks. So this primary pivot here, the, 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 the whatever, the pink or whatever that color that is, I'm colorblind, I guess. Um, that pivot is all about taking what you got and finding a way to expose that in the cloud, okay? That is the primary focus of that. So here, the prom promise is that either you're using cloud for some other scalability aspect, put a, put a cloud front, such that like a lot, lot of the scenario that we covered here, we believe like, you know, if you move, move the needle quite a bit forward. And of course, like I'm not going to pretend that is probably things that we could do better there, and we'll continue to do there. Oh, and then the another thing that we move the needle forward is you are not actually exposing and taking on any more security risk. 
And in fact, like, you know, offloading that to us, you know, it's, it's much better because, like, you know, we can actually do that better in a centralized platform way. And, and we, we'll build on this more and more, right? So that is, that is the kind of the, the, uh, the principle that we are going for for that bucket. Next bucket I already talked about, running in the cloud, right? Everything you got already, but, like, you know, you want to, like, host it in the cloud. Uh, a, because like you want to cut down on your uh, pre-provisioning cost, capacity planning cost, etc. It could be just that. That in itself is a big enough value prop for you to like go, uh, go up and uh, run in the cloud. And the scenarios that we are already seeing customers in our TAP program start using is, there is like multiple people. How many of you are already hosting BizTalk for your, your customers? There you go. So a lot of those mm -hmm. are like the, I'm, I'm sure like it's not a very happy uh, uh, <laughs> IT situation for you, right? And kind of like doing all the heavy lifting always on, disaster recovery, all of that, that thing, right? It's, it's not the trivial thing to do for any IT department. And Microsoft is basically putting itself in the critical path saying, hey, we want to be the world's IT department. And guess what? Like, you know, I think, I think we could do a lot more things better now, because, especially because the onus is on us. Right? If I don't do a good job in building the, building the software in the first place, now it's not something like saying, okay, it's your problem. Like, it's not my problem. Like, you know, if you have like, you know, any problem, give my support a call. No. It's like now I am hosting the shit. Like, you know, if, sorry, part of my language. <laughs> now it's my team. Like, both this pivot, right? It's we are the ops. So if I am not doing a better job of like building a scalable, robust system, I can't call somebody. You are calling me. And, and either I can develop new code or I can actually like support. So guess what? I am motivated to like do it in a way that like you know it, it reduces my support cost. And so overall, this is the, actually the right principle again, right? I think we want to build better software at, at, at the end of the day, a better platform at the end of the day. So that could be one pivot, right? And and we, the other other thing that we are actually hearing is people want to use like cloud burst, like you know. Hey, I'm actually getting a peak load, and there is a, like everywhere, like it's like 20 percent. But then there is like one hour a day where it's like 90 percent, and I don't want a provision at that level, right? But then I'm actually wasting my resources for the, the 23 hours of the day. So this is again like one place where we believe like you know people will uh, seamlessly tap into cloud. Uh, so I want to have a bust where like you know I'm actually doing like. Uh, uh, one hour of like heavy spending and heavy provisioning, and after that I tear it down. So that could be a one area cloud perfectly fits in. The other scenario that we are trying is, or we are hearing people try is, hey, I want to have DR in the cloud. I want to have active, active, or active, passive, or whatever. Like you know, I want to have DR in the cloud such that if one my on premise goes down, I have some backup without actually having a downtime. So I think these are all like things that right now, what the way that we are looking at is that. The images, both the single node uh, topology and multi node topology, we have both available out of the box. And we are looking at primarily encouraging you to go do a dev test type of scenario, right? And try to, I try to figure out the limitations, et cetera, and give us the feedback. And we are 100% behind it in terms of making it more scalable and more robust for all sort of production scenarios. And I will come to the monetary aspect of, go back to that. I want to spend one more, one more minute on it. I'll get to the monetary aspect a little bit of the, the uh, infrastructure as service, BizTalk running just BizTalk as it is in the cloud, right? And before that, I want to touch on one uh, very powerful aspect of what Azure uh, offers, which BizTalk takes advantage of, which is any infrastructure that you are setting up in the cloud via Azure, you, there is a technology called Azure Connect. How many of you are familiar with it? Right, VPN, right? So it's basically age-old VPN tunnel. And we have, we have kind of generically built it in a way that you go set up a VPN tunnel. And after that, like, you know, it's linked to your subscription. We open the tunnel. We manage all the security, et cetera. Such that like, any, any, uh, any in, uh, VMs that you provision in the cloud for your, for your IT, for your on-prem, it looks very seamless, right? For you, it's like, hey, yet another machine available in my domain. It's a domain joint machine. And so it's a domain John Bistock, right? So I think, I think it's like Bistock also plays into that. We have done a lot of work to hard on that in that topology. So now, like you don't, it's not even like you know, something in the cloud. It is actually like you know, virtually linked to your network. So I think that's, 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 that's a powerful thing that I just want to just spend a minute on. And I'll move on to the pay, pay, pay side of things, right? Now we are supporting two kind of model here. One, you don't want to like buy an entire license. You want to pay per use. Like, you know, you're only using it for, like, you know, uh, I don't know, one day of a week. You just pay for that, 
right? And that in itself is probably a big enough value prop for people to consider, start considering uh, uh, running in the cloud. The second thing that I would say is, another thing that we are hearing is, hey, I, I have Slack capacity. I bought two licenses, and I'm only using one for most part. I have Slack capacity. I want to apply that to the cloud. Guess what? We are supporting a license mobility, and, and, and you can talk to Ken Brown, who is our product manager, uh, as well like in terms of like, you know, some, other, some other intricacies of that. But again, like, you know, our, prom our promise is that we are actually supporting you both ways. If you, want, if you don't want to have up upfront commitment, and if you want to pay per, per, per use, there will be some premium over the amortized hourly cost. But you know, that's reasonable. But then you are only like, you know, paying that. Or you are basically saying, I'm going to use all the time. Uh, I do want to have license, but then there are slack that I want to apply elsewhere in a, in a scalable way, and again, you get to do that. I think, I think there are topologies that we talked about, right? Either I can have active, active, or active, passive kind of a thing. We can play with all of that. I think we are not restricting anything. From, from our perspective, you can either have like two host of, uh, two, two Bistox uh, instances available nat like natively within your firewall, or you put one on the cloud and, and scale it up and down as per your need. And, and only pay for the uh, use of it. And, but it's there when you need it. And in terms of latency, region, et cetera, we do have Azure has multiple data center all over the ge geographic location. So if you want to have like one in Europe, in London, I don't I think Europe, there's Central Europe. And, and over a period of time, we'll have more and more data centers that are physically located uh, in different places, right? Right now, there is like, like few in North America, few in uh, um, Europe, and we are actually trying to open one in uh, China. Like, so I think, I think it's, it's, it's getting a lot more robust. And we are also supporting another fancy things that, that people don't get is we support like geo replication, right? You could basically say, I want the DR to be not even in this data center. It to be, needs to be in a data, different data center. And just in case the, where you are warehousing, if that hits an earthquake or something, I am protected. I'll spend like 30 seconds on this slide. Now, we already covered a lot of the pivots, right? If you look at Azure, Microsoft is building the cloud platform, right, all up. And, and, and even to segue to the conversation that we have been having, the Microsoft value, value pr promise is that, hey, I'm going to make it as seamless between server and server, uh, the cloud as possible in the future, right? We are already there in some aspects, like the single sign-on we talked about, et cetera. But we will only get like, you know, more robust as, as, as we go, like, you know, and the more feedback that we are hearing from uh, enterprises in terms of, like, you know, management experience, et cetera, we would actually keep going in this direction where we are actually providing all the value proportion of cloud, but at the same time, like, you know, I think you don't have to compromise, no compromise from, uh, from, uh, from an on-premise server uh, experience that, and robustness that you are used to in terms of control, et cetera. So there are several building blocks we are putting in place, which are, like, rebuilt from cloud-first mentality, and Bistock squarely fits in that place, right? Bistock is also reimagining what is the next decade for Bistock. And, and we are basically saying, hey, you know, we are going to build, a, build a, the platform for the next 10 years. And we are going to seamlessly tell a story between server and service. So our vision is that it's one Bistock, which will span across, like, you know, I think when I go to the next slide, I'll talk about, like, you know, what is our Uber vision, like, you know, I think, uh, but uh, hang, hang on to the thought for a second. But here, like even without anything, you can already see like, hey, I do need like something like Bistock here because you are starting to have all disparate systems even within the Azure portfolio, let alone like you know different service providers out there, like you know SaaS, other SaaS providers, Salesforce, other your CRM uh, uh, online, etc. But even within Azure, you can start imagining I do need to start telling integration story. So even if I don't talk about server to services premise. Uh, parity, I still need like something something to integrate all my services. So even there, the stock natively fits into the picture. So we are looking at both, right? We're looking at on-premise to SaaS, our, 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 be it our SaaS or like third-party SaaS, and third-party to third-party SaaS, like completely, right? I think we are covering you on both front. So sorry, I'm actually like, you know, not spending enough time on explaining the Azure basics, but I do want to spend enough time on this one. So again, like if you look at like uh, the past service platform as service we are building for Bistock, hybrid solution also like you know ranks very highly here, right? If you think about it, the last 20 minutes I explained to you like how you can take what you have built in server and expose or like use cloud at will for complementary scenario. That is one side of the equation. Here, what you are saying is that, hey, I, you are having a new project. You are having a greenfield uh, solution where, like, you 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 after like doing the research, you are saying you are ready to do this type of workload on the cloud. 
But by the way, I don't want to like, you know, take any hit on the LOV uh, applications that I've already built. I don't want to reinvent them. I don't want to move them to the cloud, et cetera. So it's the other side of the equation. So now you are doing bulk of the new development on the cloud, but I want to like, you know, have a connectivity going back to my server. So if you understand the, the bias, right? The one was pre predominantly like I have everything invested in the server side and it's going to continue to remain that way. And even the new scenarios only fits in the server, server, server model because I want to have tight control over it, be it data security or whatever, right? Uh, compliance and whatnot. And then I do want to connect to the cloud. Here you are saying like, hey, I'm ready to subscribe to cloud for this workload, but like, you know, I still need to like, you know, for example, you can say like, you know, for my approval orchestration, et cetera, I can only host within my firewall. Right, I don't want, want to, I don't want to like have that IP uh, on, on the cloud. So then we got it covered there as well. So I'm, I'm not going to go any more detail there. Uh, so another, another premise, like as we are imagining the, uh, uh, reimagining BizTalk for the next uh, decade, we, the one thing that is coming very loud and clear, right? Like we need to like, already BizTalk in many ways is like a, compared to our competitors is a lot more, you know, conflict driven experience without of an experience, but we are hearing like, hey, if you look at Azure, like things are even more easy now, right? Things are one, under one number line Azure. All the disparate entities are managed through Azure portal, and Azure portal has a PowerShell or a, a REST API <laughs> backend, so you can put like in a PowerShell and uh, SCOM integration, et cetera, into system server, uh, system center, et cetera. But we want actually like elevate our, our game to say like, you know, development is a lot easier, management is a lot easier in the, in the, in the new stack, in the new platform for the next decade. And you are seeing us like inventing a lot of that on the, on the cloud side of the thing first. And then over a period of time, we'll bring the platform and make it seamless between server and services. Um, and, and we are going for, a, 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 with that team, um, I don't have time to talk to the details here. We are doing more out of box support, like, you know, be it like, you know, we are introducing a concept called bridge, which basically ties the lifetime of uh, the, the source and destination to the pipeline. And again, we feel like you know that that's a much better, uh, easier to manage entity in, in, as a whole. And they are like they are supporting a lot of out of the box patterns, right? Be it better pattern, or like you know. And at, at the same time, we will actually have like you know a lot of extensibility built into it. Um, and yet another thing that I will cover here is one other thing that we are concentrating on the services side for the first turn of the crank is we are concentrating on two two segments, right? One, we want to go after. Uh, enterprises, enterprise scenarios, where like you know, big like you know, kind of like you know, you are able to like kind of, uh, you have already a IT shop, you already have a development shop, and you want to actually kind of like uh, do your next greenfield project on the on the on the on the cloud. And the second pivot is that I'm going like you know, you are an ISV, you are hosting other other tenants uh, already and managing with that complexity. And for you, it's it's a no-brainer. Like if you are starting a new project, it's a no-brainer investment to consider uh, a cloud first. And so we are subscribed, like we are actually uh, like, you know, catering to these two audience in that thing. And then one other thing that we are actually uh, uh, optimizing for is the EDA vertical. From a B2B perspective, we are going after trading partner management portal, et cetera, that, that hopefully like you'll see more demos today, where like, you know, the experience is completely conflict driven. We go from taking weeks to set up partners and agreements, et cetera, even on top of BizTalk server. How many of you are doing in the B2B business? So then you can probably like you know uh, uh, comprehend what I'm trying to say. Here it goes from like you know I don't know like uh, uh, days to weeks to in order of minutes where you can actually have partnership established and up and running. So I'll spend a little bit on the managed services front. Um, so few few of the value prop that we want to bring to the table on the platform as service perspective is. We talked about all the cloud cloud promises, right? Easy provisioning, elasticity, uh, you know, easy to manage, um, you know, uh, extensible, rich, all of that, right? I think I'm not going to talk to any of that. I'll talk to only one, right? One of the play things that we are doing very unique, even to even to Azure, is that this service, BizTalk service in particular, we are starting from the enterprise first <laughs> mentality. By that I mean, it's not a multi-tenant service. It's not a multi-tenant environment, right? You, it's it's like when you come. I'm actually tailor making an uh, environment for you. And you are completely isolated from a compute perspective. You're not competing for resource, and your data is kept isolated in that environment at the cloud services level. So it, from, a, from a robustness perspective, security perspective, it's a lot better. But leaving that alone, you are not competing with other, another tenant. And the reason why we actually are building it this way is 
Integration is one business where no matter what I, how much out of box support uh, support I have, you are going to have, want to have right custom custom code at the end of the day to just tailor make for your integration experience. And when I am supporting custom code, how can I have multi tenant environment without actually compromising security? So a lot of the things that we are doing that is unique for even Azure is we are actually saying, hey, you know, we will actually when you come on board, you create a stock thing. I am going to dedicate a set of resources for you. Right? And they are ring fenced and assigned to only you. So you get to control, you get to provision, you get to do whatever you want there. You get to put like, you know, you can you can go to go to town and you can write like all sort of code there. And you are not going to compromise the uh, next tenant, tenant next to you, vice versa. More or less your private cloud. It, more or less it's your private, private little crowd cloud. Um, I, I I will skimp on extensibility in, in the interest of time. Um, so basically here, like you know, what we are saying is that which talks to the, the, the custom customizable aspect that I talked about. Every aspect of what we are building, we are going to open it up such that they are extensible, a partner ecosystem can be built around. In the, our vision in the future is there, and we are not perfect today, it's just V1, and we have like, you know, we know that we need to open up one or two things that are high in our priority, like opening up SaaS connectivity adapter space, such that like partners and more, more like we will provide the, uh, you know, the majority uh, of, of the need, and then there is the, the long 20% uh, tail need that can be like filled from a partner ecosystem perspective. Um, and our vision here, that alone I'll spend a minute on, is eventually to have a thriving marketplace in Azure, right? A lot of the things that, like, you know, as a partner or as a customer, you're struggling to have the discoverability established today, right? Your reach is only limited by who you are able to talk to. So here, what we were, the promise that the vision that we have in this space is, you would actually, like, you know, have just like your app ecosystem in iPhone, iPad, or Windows Phone, and now Surface, uh, it'll be that seamless, right? You should be able to, like, you know, subscribe to that, and we will manage all the life cycle of it. We will manage, like you don't need, you don't need to worry about, hey, you know, I'm actually getting it, getting this adapter and I'm hosting it and I don't understand the life cycle, I don't understand the, uh, how to manage, et cetera. It should be fixed and free. It, it'll be like, you know, um, so where we aspire to get to is it'll be a well-integrated uh, uh, monetization opportunity for partners um, and customers as well as us. And, and so the cloud scale ESB, one other thing that uh, we talked about, again, I think I, uh, it's, it's here, you, know, you, you can move on. So our vision is that at the end of the day, from a breadth perspective, we want to de develop BizTalk into one ESB that spans server and service. Everything comes under that umbrella, be it management experience, development experience. <laughs> so you have an itinerary that goes from server to service to server, whatnot. Like, so we seamlessly integrate all of that. Right? And then another thing is that right now the V1 of the service that we are going to be exposing doesn't have uh, DevOps support built in. Like from a long running orchestration standpoint, this is one other thing that there are, that is again high in our priority list. And this is again one other way that we are going to bring DevOps under Bista Kamberla, like you know, from a, from a Xlang perspective. Xlang will continue to, like you know, Xlang is great and Xlang has like uh, capabilities that are not there uh, in DevOps today and that will continue to be that way. But Dubuff is the orchestration engine that Microsoft is pla as a platform moving on to, and we will actually bring that under the Dubuff uh, under the Bistock portfolio. Uh, 